For a long time I've been musing on how I could make a bridge hammock that's full size and as comfortable as possible, also as light as I can. Now those of us in the bridge hammock community know that the easiest place to shed some weight um, are in the spreader bars. So these bars, I get them from Quest Outfitters, um, with the tips this weighs uh, approaching 10 ounces. And so it's an easy task to get rid of 10 ounces and replace it with something else if we can use hiking poles. Someone gave me the challenge of seeing whether I could turn a Gossamer Gear LT4 hiking pole into a spreader bar. Now the LT4 is lightweight, a pair of these is uh, 102 grams. It is um, a adjustable hiking pole that turns out to be handy. Um, we know from experience with other hiking poles how to connect that to the corner of the hammock. The larger issue is how do you connect this cork handle? And as they come, it's a solid cork handle. So the question was, um, how is it that we can cause compression forces to be transferred through this end without destroying the handle? So we did an experiment. The experiment was to take the uh, pole apart, take a bit of dowel, put it inside, and then push and push and push to find out what would happen. Watching the top of the hiking pole, what I saw happen was that a bit of glued in circle of the uh, cork started to stress and started to pop out and voila, out came the dowel rod. So now we have a solution and that is to put a piece of dowel rod inside and we can have the compression force go right through that handle without touching the handle. Turns out that for a 36 inch spreader bar, we need a piece of dowel that is uh, four and a half inches, five inches, something like that, measured exactly, and uh, that will do the job. The next challenge is figuring out how to have the hiking poles attach at the corner of the hammock. Now, some years ago, a fellow named Walking Bear on Hammock Forums made a pair of devices and sent them to me. Uh, they're made out of a large piece of aluminum. I think this is a quarter inch uh, deep aluminum. Uh, it has a hole in the center to admit the tip of the hiking pole. It has big holes on the end, and this is where the webbing on the suspension would go. Now, I'm not going to use webbing. I'm going to use cord, uh, so I can have those be significantly small. In fact, I can reduce the whole package to something much, much smaller. Uh, uh, which is this. Now four of these things weigh 19 grams. Uh, I made it out of a bar of aluminum that is one and one quarter inch wide and then I cut it so it's three quarters of an inch uh, deep and then drilled uh, three holes and countersinked and took files and such to, to smooth it all out. And so this will happily admit the tip of the hiking pole. For that matter it will happily admit one of these bowls if I want to do that as well. It's well known that another way to save a couple of ounces on a bridge hammock is not to use webbing on the suspension, but to use cord of some kind. Uh, some folks have used Dynaglide, uh, which is uh, two millimeters. It has a, a thousand pound tensile strength. Um, problem for me for uh, Dynaglide is that it tends to burn my retinas, either in the orange or the green. Um, discovered that there's an equivalent rope, not so bright. Uh, this is called uh, Endura 12. It's made by New England Ropes. Uh, like the Dynaglide, the, the core stuff is Dyneema SK75, uh, I think, and here I get it in what's called clear. It looks white, and so I'm going to use that uh, for my suspension uh, on the side of the channel and then also all the way up to the tree, and that'll save me some weight. Another way we'll get significant weight savings is by using lighter material. So the hammock I'm going to show you is made out of 1.1 uh, ripstop nylon. I'm going to have to make a channel for that uh, cord to go through and I want that channel to be strong and I'm concerned about uh, that cord just stretching one layer of the 1.1 nylon. So the way that I dealt with that is to take a strip um, three and a half inches wide of uh, sill nylon uh, and then sew it down uh, one and a half inches from the edge and I can fold it over and that's sort of putting a edge around um, the uh, edge of the uh, uh, ripstop. Then I will simulate sewing. And then I can fold this over and that'll be my channel. So uh, this is um, 
three quarters of an inch and I'll use about half of that for uh, stitching and such and leaving the rest for the channel to pass through. When one sees what is being stressed when the cord goes through, we're going to have two layers of sill nylon and one of the 1.1 uh, nylon. And when we look to see what is sewn through, then we're going to have four layers of the sill nylon and two of the 1.1. So that, uh, that ought to be plenty strong. One of the places that we can look to save some weight now is in tree webbing. I've had through my lab four or five different kinds of one inch wide polyester straps and they've ranged in weight from 5.4 grams per foot to uh, more like 10 grams per foot. So if you take a hypothetical hanger who's carrying say two six foot long uh, straps and suppose they're made out of six grams per foot stuff, that means that he's carrying 72 grams of tree webbing. Turns out that you can do better than that. Uh, a friend of mine, Dutch, on the hammock forums occasionally has a good idea and he posted one recently that has the insight that the only place you really need tree straps is on the back side of the tree where the force is if you can then have cord on the sides that connect to the hammock suspension in some way. And he showed a solution where he's got a whoopee sling coming from his hammock to the tree and then he uses one of these titanium gee-haw things he's fond of uh, to make it all hang together and it's a good, it's a good solution. Uh, in my case I'm going to use a UCR on the hammock and I already blew my gee-haw budget on those uh, metal corner things on my hammock so I need to do something different. Uh, but I'll take the main key idea and that's to have webbing, short piece of webbing on the back side of the tree. This is about two feet and then have cord on the side so I've got whoopee slings on both sides so it's adjustable and then some way of connecting to the front and I'll step through this when we actually hang the hammock. But the main thing is that a pair of these comes in at 41 ounces as compared to the hypothetical 72 ounces and so we stand to gain um, a certain amount of savings uh, by changing the way that we do tree strappings. Got the hammock bundle now here ready to hang on this first tree. This is a relatively big tree so we're going to have the strapping on the far side with cords coming off uh, to the side. So notice as I unroll this we have a whoopee sling on this slide and at the very end of it is this uh, little piece that has a loop that slides along inside of the loop of the whoopee sling and has two diamond knots. The second diamond knot right now is a jam for the fixed eye on the UCR that's going to the hammock and so it's just attached and this uh, first one in line is going to be an attachment point for the whoopee sling on the far side. Bring it around and position the strap to be on the back side. And now here is the whoopee sling from the far side. Slip it over that first knot, put the slider there to attention it. And now we have just as uh, we needed, uh, strapping on the back with cords to the side. Possibility of lengthening or shortening this um, as need be. Now this is a much smaller tree, in fact, um, it's small enough so that the webbing goes all the way around. So I'm going to treat this one as a, as a more customary uh, tree strap. I'll disconnect the hammock from the tree strap, then bring the tree strap around, and you'll see here I've made a little uh, loop um, so that we can pass the cord through and have it be fastened to the tree just as normal. Then can connect the hammock to the rest of the suspension and we are good to go. The rest of the suspension is a UCR. The berry is 12 inches. Uh, the tail has a knot uh, to this. I've put some uh, zingot uh, on a uh, prussic and then the loop I have one of these uh, whipping knots again so that uh, I can do the adjustment uh, with the UCR and then when I need to tighten up the tail I bring the loop over and then tighten it up and tighten it down. You want the dowel to be fairly well seated inside of the pole so that it sticks out just a little bit, maximizing the amount of the dowel that's inside of the um, outer tubing. Um, and after that, it's a straightforward proposition to pop it in. Here then is the aluminum corner piece in action. The hole there, the tip fits in. Um, I've taken a piece of Dyneema ripstop and uh, made it as a cover to protect the tarp from the sharp edge of the pole tip. Uh, that's fastened by super glue on the bottom side and then here I've drilled a couple of extra holes and put a loop through the top there and then fastened it down with very lightweight cord. Um, you can see also I've attached here a loop of zingot 
and that's so that quilts can be attached at the corner. The uh, aluminum piece is attached to the suspension, having the suspension line go through the hole, then a brummel, and then buried. There's about six inches of bury on the hammock side, and then to keep the hammock body from sliding under load, I've stitched through the uh, channel, through the cord, along that bury on each of the corners, and those are the only places where I've done stitching to hold this. Uh, and something similar on that side. Something that has uh, less to do with saving weight and more to do with getting the most comfort out of this hammock is the decision I made to bring the spreader bars in closer, both at the head and at the foot. And so uh, what happens here is that the spreader bar is now just above my head. I can sit up without it uh, banging, uh, but it has been brought in closer to my shoulders. And the reason for that is then I get more spread uh, there at my shoulders. So in this hammock, there's 48 inches of fabric underneath uh, the spreader bar the spreader bar is 36 inches and that gives me as flat a lay as I've had in a grist bridge and it's really quite nice. Uh, that does mean that I've had to re-engineer the end cap. So the hammock body has been uh, cut shorter and we're going to have an extension. Uh, so it's cut uh, right to where the spreader bar would be, right over the, over the head. Um, I took a piece of fabric that was um, a foot uh, in width and then finished it off and uh, sewed it to the main body but stopped short here. So there is a, a nine inch uh, distance from uh, this point to this point uh, where the extension was not directly sewed. The reason for that is to create a gap up here so we can bring in the aluminum piece uh, and then uh, attach the spreader bar and then close the gap with a triangular piece. Then the rest of the extension, there's just a channel and it just rests on the, um, on the suspension and then there's an end cap right here. One of the things we needed to do was bring in some fabric on this side. We just did that with uh, a dart and uh, make it all fit. So that's really um, all there is to it. It's, uh, it's a nice comfortable hammock and uh, if we go to the scales now we can see uh, the degree to which the goals of a lightweight hammock have been achieved. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for one hammock with suspension comes to 223 grams. We have two tree straps, each of them six feet long, that brings it up to 264 and a half grams. Then we add the dowel rod inserts that turn hiking poles into spreader bars, and that brings the total up to 281 grams. That is just shy of 10 ounces. So to review what we've got here, I've shown how to make a complete full-size bridge hammock system uh, quite light. But there are three things to remember about this. First of all, the biggest weight gain was by getting rid of dedicated spreader bars and using hiking poles. And that's a weight gain that you can uh, apply to most any bridge hammock if you just get the right hiking poles, and that's highly recommended. Uh, it's also the case that none of the things that I did were rocket science. It was mostly a matter of identifying lightweight materials at every step along the way use them and pay attention to details. A second point is that the use of the UCRs and the lighter weight tree straps uh, means that there's a more of a finicky factor in setup. Uh, I don't mind, somebody else might mind, uh, there is no free lunch. And a final point is that those that are looking to have the lightest weight possible bridge hammock, there are things that you can do. You can accept a narrower spreader bar by using hiking poles that um, don't have to have some kind of dowel support. The hiking pole can do it themselves. Uh, you can get rid of those aluminum end pieces that um, support the, uh, the spreader bar. Those are convenient, but there are lighter weight ways of doing that. And of course, you can use a lighter weight material than 1.1 nylon. It's possible to make a bridge hammock uh, out of Cuban. And so the weight gains from those will bring you down maybe another couple of ounces uh, if you really want to go there. But for me, right now, I'm happy with what I've got and uh, happy to share what I've found. Ah, so we're here. Clearly the life of Riley.